Today, I'm going to take you through in a very quick uh, half hour session um, some of the kind of frameworks, the practical realities, and the kind of what's happening with creative practice now. I'm focusing in a way, in a, uh, uh, obviously, on London, but there are a number of other uh, places around the world that have similar things going on in them to London. I just wanted to, uh, to do, maybe if I've got time at the end, I'll go through with, with them as well. But um, we have places like Toronto with the uh, Waterloo Innovation Corridor, places like Hilversum Media Park in, uh, in the Netherlands, places like uh, Subtopia in Stockholm, places like Colorado's Space to Create, places like Shenzhen uh, City, Maker City in China are all going through uh, a period of uh, great kind of uh, creative transformation. And this is something that um, we've seen in London uh, independently of, of, of government for some time in the UK, but increasingly what I'm going to uh, be mentioning towards the end of the kind of uh, some of the kind of uh, policies and, and things that are, uh, are changing about London. We're also going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the ups and downs of the last year or so what an amazingly uh strange time we've all been living through over the last uh, eight to ten months um but hopefully we're going to be looking at some of the kind of positive uh, outcomes and some of the possibilities for the future in terms of where london sits as a, a creative hub i'm going to be using the word hub quite a lot it's a word that's often used to describe how uh, creative uh, uh, people come together and work. Um, so there's a little bit of anthropology in what I'm saying. There's a little bit of um, personal experience. Um, I grew up in London, uh, in West London, and uh, I've spent the majority of my life working in all over London. Um, and we're going to sort of talk through that a bit and maybe look at some of the kind of um, trends and uh, things that are, are going on at the moment that may hopefully be of interest to you. So we're going to be looking at those frameworks, the practical realities and the ethics of creative practice. As Tracy said, if you've got a question, uh, you'd like to put that in the chat box at any stage, that'd be great. If you want me to repeat something um, or, or zoom in on something a little bit more, then uh, then, then uh, please do that and I'll see if I can pick that up as we go along as well. So this is a, a slide that's wheeled out just to kind of put it in a wider context. Um, the creative industries, which is really frankly a term that really came to light in about 1997 with the Prime Minister at the time, who was uh, uh, Tony Blair. Um, creative industries became this kind of uh, benchmark, kind of uh, coverall uh, expression for anything that creative, uh, anything creative that anyone does in the UK. I'm in two minds about this. I'm not speaking as a politician to you today. I'm talking to you as a creative. Um, and we always have to take any kind of uh, political um, uh, story with a, with a pinch of uh, salt because it's obviously there to promote and there's a, often a PR, a public uh, uh, relations exercise as much as it is something that helps creative people. But this is quite an interesting figure. As you can see that um, this is, goes up to 2018, this slide, and you can see the impact um, of the continued growth that creative industries had over uh, uh, the last uh, few years, um, particularly since around, well, as I say, starting in 1997, by and large, but over the last 10 years, what we've seen is a huge, huge change in the role of IT, software and games, which is Perhaps quite surprising if you were to think about the UK uh, from an external point of view. I, I, I would imagine that perhaps you might think of uh, music or um, uh, uh, sometimes film and TV, potentially advertising. But what we see here is that IT, software and games are really important to the UK economy. economy. And that's largely unknown, I think, by many people working in the creative industries. Um, it tends to be slightly less um, on the surface um, than it is, uh, 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 or less visible perhaps, than some of the other genres. Um, and this has 
been um, moved on, moved along by um, uh, certain areas of London uh, being invested in, um, particularly place like Shoreditch, which is in East London, which initially was, was known for uh, having very really cheap warehouse space and uh, being very run down, being very uh, 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 low um, uh, 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 rent, um, is now an area uh, where there's huge IT uh, investment. We're going to be coming on to Shoreditch and, and uh, King's Cross development slightly later on. But as you can see, IT software and games is huge in the UK. Uh, film and TV is another one that we're going to be coming on to in a, in a second. Uh, some of the more traditional um, uh, uh, creative industries, like publishing, is pretty small. Um, advertising, surprisingly, not as not as uh, large as, as you may expect, and design, uh, equally, not not quite up there with IT software and games. So they tend to be our biggest exports. And so, to the next slide here. So London, this is, London is really a, a patchwork of villages. If you've been to London, uh, you may have visited the kind of big landmarks in the centre, um, but what you may not have been as aware of, um, maybe you have, I don't know, but the infrastructure and the way that London was born was born really out of villages that then were sucked into the middle. Uh, that were that, that London has been growing and absorbing villages and towns and even places that would now be considered fairly central uh, places like Peckham, which is a, a very big creative area in the south uh, of London, but recent creative area born by again always the same way cheaper rents initially places that that that, that didn't have the investment uh, from elsewhere became places where creative people could set up studios. And so places like Peckham, um, Haringey, Hackneywick, these are all places that sound perhaps a little bit like villages. Hackneywick certainly does, but if you've ever been to Hackneywick, it's uh, nothing like a, a village now. Um, so all of these places have been absorbed in, and there are many, there's always been expansion. London has always continued to grow outwards and outwards from, from the epicentre to the point of now when you may have walked around Soho, for instance, which was the um, centre of the film uh, and advertising industry dating back to 1912. Um, there's now far more bars, hotels, Kind of lifestyle creative places and there are actually creative places to work in um, and this is part of uh, gentrification which we're going to come on to so i don't know whether you've been to any of the places on this little map here that there's this uh, illustration but camden hounds life hamden you may well have been to because it's uh, again a kind of retail center it's a trendy sort of uh, uh, retail area um, but it also uh, came from, from having big warehouse and, and unit spaces that could be adapted a bit more for music than for, for, for film, and uh, although film is, is there with MTV, of course, but film and, and music rather than visual creative arts. But there are some surprising names on this list uh, of places that many Londoners would not consider to be creative. Places like Croydon, uh, which is where Kate the model Kate Moss came from, probably most famous for that, but also Croydon is known for having a very boring uh, 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 shopping centre. Uh, and Lewisham, likewise, uh, Sutton, again, these are suburbia, what we, what we would term suburbia in London's uh, 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 viewpoint. And these were all places that in 2018 became creative uh, enterprise zones, uh, which was commissioned by the the Mayor of London. So these are really interesting spaces that are in development in terms of how creativity and the creative industries are evolving um, within within the city. Um, another one, Haringey, Lambeth, Brixton, um, Tower Hamlets, of course I've mentioned Hackneywick, uh, Southwark, which is where UAL, London College of Communication, is based. And they're all known for slightly different things. If you were to draw a map up of 
people who work in Southwark, you would find an awful lot of um, uh, architectural practices along the south of the river there. If you were to go to Peckham, you would find uh, a large amount of kind of visual art and illustration. And yet these places are next door to each other. And yet they create their own distinctive, rather like this kind of village metaphor still, it's their own distinctive neighbourhoods. Um, and this is one of the kind of really good upsides of of how London has developed. It seems to have retained some kind of energy that uh, that I'm going to bring out. You may have heard of Paddington Bear. <laughs> I love quoting you know, fictional creatures. Paddington Bear is a cartoon. It's actually a, a book um, uh, and has been made into two different films, two films recently. In London, everyone is different, and that means everyone can fit in. I really like that quote um, because I think it, it works well with how the creative industries have developed over time. Um, then I've got a quote here from Anna Quilden, who is a, a Pulitzer Award-winning uh, journalist and writer from the US. London opens to you like a novel itself. It's divided into chapters, the chapters into scenes, the scenes into sentences. It opens you, it opens to you like a series of rooms, doors and passages, made fair to particularly to Soho to the Strand. Again, it's that idea of London being perhaps cop, you know, sort of compartmentalised into different, different, very unique uh, um, uh, areas. And then, of course, David Bailey, the uh, famous 1960s photographer. If you're curious, London's an amazing place. Um, and I think that that's very true. Sometimes you have to go and find these places. If you just go to Hyde Park and Kensington and Piccadilly and Soho uh, and even just Shoreditch now, um, you will get a very, uh, although you'll see lots of different things in a short space of time, you won't get the full flavour of the different neighbourhoods. Uh, and things that are going on are often the most interesting things that are going on are often in the peripheries. So this idea that uh, that sometimes you know the the, the the most interesting things are happening in the areas where things are just starting up. And then this is from the current London mayor. Uh, this is you know quite a number crunchy sort of statement. Um, but the creative industry is a key to to London's success. They contribute 47 billion a year to the UK economy, one in six jobs, which is which is quite something. Um, and it's growing four times faster. Now, this was this was written last year. So obviously, when we're thinking about the future of these things, we have to sort of think of the uh, impact of, of COVID, not just the um, obviously. And this is true everywhere in the world, not just the the uh, medical uh, impact and the obvious very sad loss of life and and, uh, and illness but also obviously uh, the economic uh, impact and um, one area here where it's um, very obvious that there are huge huge concerns is the um, music film tv um, live events certainly um, have had a huge huge uh, knock in the last six to eight months with unfortunately no real sign of that changing anytime soon. So we'll be interesting to see and obviously very probably very sad to see when the next numbers come out how um, COVID has impacted the creative industries. I think that some areas are faring better than others. We talk about the IT and um, the main gaming industries they've been far better well um, equipped just by the nature of, of the work in, in involved to to work from home for instance which is something that everyone pretty much has done since march um, and that again will uh, leads me on to what i'm gonna um, end with today um, and where i see london going physically going as well as as well as mentally going um, and then this was Sir so Peter Basilgate, 2017, just to give you another sort of uh, number crunching. So between 2010 and 2015, grew by 34%. So this is for the uh, the whole of the UK, not just for London, uh, because we find that part of this dissemination of, uh, of, of, of of people and knowledge, London is going through a phase where the current government uh, is make, making noises about you know, kind of decentralisation, particularly after 
uh, Brexit, which is uh, coming at the end of the year. And organisations like the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, have already moved to Manchester from London, which is a huge change for the way that um, that media is is seen in the UK. Uh, Manchester itself is very well known, a city in the north of England, um, and there is a media. Um, it's called the media town, media city. Media city in Manchester is a huge, big development that has taken some of the uh, the talent, undoubtedly some of the talent, out of London, but is actually possibly fairer for the whole of the UK. London has always been, Britain has always been bottom heavy. Everything is gravitated to London, so it's interesting to see how that's being broken up, even to the point of Parliament itself maybe moving out of London when uh, renovations happen to the Houses of Parliament which would be, again, a very interesting uh, uh, thing to happen. So we've, we've seen the rise of other cities, particularly in Manchester, like I say, Bristol is another city in the west of England, which has also um, become one of the major smart cities of the world. And many uh, people are also working and living in Bristol um, because London has this perennial uh, issue of uh, high rent, rather like New York. Um, and uh, the standard of living is good, but obviously it's a big major city, so it's very busy. So alongside the talking about the um, uh, the way that, that cities are run, um, we need to look at how creative industries are run from studios. What, what I've noticed, and this is from a McKinsey report, just basically on how often work in general, um, uh, what we're seeing is a, a big change from kind of um, organisations as machines. So this kind of top heavy, um, or sorry, uh, you know, bottom heavy um, way of working where you have a boss at the top and you have the workers beneath and everyone has a designated, very hierarchical structure to organisations as organisms. And so this is, an, this is a really good idea. So a kind of flatter organisation, these are called flat organisations. And what, we, what I feel is that the rest of all other industries are copying the creative industries in London. For years, creative industries have been pretty much uh, open plan. Uh, you sit next to your boss, you have a, a good working relationship with them, right from the smallest atelier studios to, to quite big, big uh, agencies, there tends to be a little bit of um, group meeting where you'd have different skill sets in the same room, uh, everyone's being treated equally. I think this is uh, something that we need to think about going forward and the idea of being an organism rather than a machine is that an organism can evolve and change and shift depending on being much more malleable depending on what's going on. Um, so these kind of agile organizations are really the way that um, the, the, the creative industry is giving to even sectors like banking and fintech um, uh, the kind of a, a new way of, of, of involving uh, and thinking about your employees. And then, you know, the creative industries don't just live in a bubble on their own. Um, when we think about creative industries, probably from the way that we look at it as creatives, we're looking at it from the production sense. We're looking at the actual thing that's produced. Whereas actually, there's two other areas. There's the supply chain, all the things that, that um, supply us with the materials we need as creatives. And then the consumption, so the people that buy it. Um, and London in that sense is, is struggled at, I think, slightly on the supply chain as the city, as the centre of the city becomes somewhere that is expensive to park, you know, getting a lorry in there, getting film sets or whatever into the centre. What we're seeing is that is helping this kind of outside uh, ripple take effect. So we're finding that film studios have been uh, earmarked for places outside of the M25, which is a motorway that goes all the way around London. You could argue that anything within the M25 motorway is London and anything outside of that is, is not London. But I think that that will change over the next uh, five to 10 years as we begin to think less about um, uh, 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 the kind of spoke effect and more about connecting up hubs that already exist. And that really helps with the supply chain. So the ethics of creative practice. Um, 
This is this is something. Before I go into that, I think that some of the other the issues that we're dealing with currently in London in the creative industries are a number of things that are going on elsewhere in the world as well. Uh, the first one is the lack of diversity, particularly in things like the advertising industry, um, and that uh, 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 has been um, um, very much sort of gone uh, uh, rightfully up the agenda uh, over the last three or four months uh, with the uh, Black Lives Matter campaigns and the way that we look at how um, institutional racism um, is, is dealt with in the UK. Um, and and certainly the there's been a lot of um, uh, news from things like um, marketing weekly uh, and campaign and other kind of trade uh, newspaper uh, trade uh, journals and newspapers to talk about how we can uh, make uh, uh, the advertising industry or the marketing industry less uh, dominated by by uh, older white men because it's still uh, perceived in that way and certainly is still run in that way um, and how we can uh, allow more women into uh, positions of uh, higher positions of power uh, how we can um, truly reflect society in uh, all of the creative industries um, but that has to come from the industry itself there's, 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 there's no other way for that but the other thing that's come up uh, that, that kind of feeds back into the the kind of uh, difficulties that creative industry may be perceived to have is this is a, a picture from uh, Grayson Perry our vice chancellor at UAL uh, and I really love this picture it's a picture about the idea of an old warehouse and then it becomes a studio and that becomes a creativity hub and before you know it it becomes a luxury apartment uh, and all the creative people are kicked out and I think Grayson Perry is called the uh, you know, like the creatives, we're kind of like the vanguard for property developers, um, which is not a uh, necessarily a positive thing. Um, I just want to quickly take you through because this session is going way too fast. <laughs> I've got eight minutes left. Um, this is an interesting thing. This tells us where this is our cultural infrastructure map of London. And you can see that there's uh, a lot of studios in Hackney and Islington, some in Lewisham, which is where I'm based. Uh, and then some in uh, Ealing, which is where I grew up. I actually accidentally followed around the cultural map and lots in Newham. Um, and this was just me clicking on creative co-working desk spaces and creative workspaces. Um, now, place making and production. So when we talk about gentrification, creativity or creative industries are quite often used for place making. That means that you get a derelict piece of land and you put a nice coffee shop in there and you have a museum and uh, give up some, uh, some workspaces. But they rely on education, housing, digital skills, regeneration, planning, transport. So creative industries in their own don't, on their own, don't, can't function. They need all of these other things to go on. So what we find is, particularly with the legacy of the London 2012 Olympics, if anyone can remember back that far, there's a huge area of Stratford that was, which is in East London, that was uh, moved over to um, uh, to create uh, this development. So we find in Stratford now, um, lots of universities have moved in. So there's the education taken care of, including UAL is in there. The London College of Fashion is actually moving to Stratford, um, which which I have mixed feelings about. It's uh, it's, it's a great great location, but the Current buildings are really nice. Um, the Smithsonian and the Victorian Albert Museum. So these are going into areas that you know were really just vacant, uh, empty warehouses. And you find that this could really radically shift the way that we perceive the map of creative London. And if there's been uh, complaints about it, it, people are saying it's on the wrong side of London from Heathrow Airport. Why would you want to go to Stratford? But uh, it's that case of build this and they will come. So far, there's been a lot of investment in this area of the former site, um, but over one and a half million people were displaced by this. And those people that were displaced were largely people who were living in council property, people at the lower end of the um, uh, financial uh, uh, spectrum of, of wage earning. So with all of these things, we, you know, there's a responsibility, I think, uh, for anyone working in the creative industry to think about the impact, the environmental, the sociological uh, impact of what they do. Um, 
And then we have King's Cross developments as well. Again, another UAL uh, site. Uh, Central St. Martins is based here. There's a beautiful building by uh, Thomas Heatherwick, an architect. Um, this is an interesting, this really sums it all up for me because here we have two locations, one which was a granary store, so that store in grain that was brought down from the north of England to make all of London's bread 100 years ago. On the side of it, um, a coal uh, yard, so we lived on coal, we had lots of coal mines in England, up in the north of England and in Wales. Uh, the ones from the north of England came and brought their coal down to London and stored it here. So in a sense, this is a really nice kind of like metaphor for how creative industries work you know our new coal our new industry is creative is creative so 100 years ago we were burning coal now we're, we're burning ideas or something else, a kind of misplaced uh, metaphor but i hope you get what i mean by that um and then new frameworks so this is where i think uh, 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 London is going. Um, this is a map of the uh, from the last month, so this is very newly out. And um, what we find is that uh, from the centre here, if I can just get my um, pointer out. So Stratford is here. Here's the centre of London. Um, and if I can make this bigger, let's have a look and see if I can make this bigger. Yeah. Okay, so we have Stratford, Poplow, these are, this is the old dock area where, again, you know, these were once transport um, infrastructure hubs and uh, uh, East London was really, has been taken up by FinTech around Canary Wharf, so that's been a development there. Stratford is on the north side of the Thames and so that now is a kind of educational uh, and, again, IT, but a more creative IT hub. And then what is suggested which is quite quite um, interesting is that this whole area um, out into Essex this is no longer London uh, this is now going into Kent and Essex in the north and Kent to the south we find that um, that this these areas are already um, uh, 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 become places where creative people live and work so Whereas previously you might have, have thought about Whitstable in Kent being a, um, a place for painters to go, which is very famous, or in the uh, in Essex, uh, Colchester, very good art um, college, um, or still has got a very good art college. What we find is that there's areas now that would be unexpected. Uh, and this is development, this is a proposal, so this is for the next five to ten years. Um, and even out as far as um, uh, as uh, Margate, which is uh, now become known through the uh, Turner Gallery there, um, uh, Turner Contemporary Gallery rather, uh, a lot of artists and creative people uh, upset with the, the prices in, in London, upset with the rent, uh, and now moving to, to that area. And I shall let you into a secret. I am actually currently at number 27 today. I'm in Ramsgate. So I have done this journey. This is my journey, which is why it was such a surprise to, uh, to find it. So I'm speaking from experience when I say that this is how, in many ways, I'm moving out. Because to the west, you have the M4 corridor. Uh, the west of London, you have the M4 corridor all the way down to Bristol. Um, to the north, uh, house prices are incredibly expensive, although there are a number of TV studios there. And to the south, again, uh, geographically, we have the North Downs. So feasibly, the only way that London can expand is, is, is eastwards because it's cheaper and there are people already there. Um, and so what's this going to be made up of? Again, IT, software and computer services are quite big. Uh, publishing is, is on the line, music, performing arts, uh, video and TV are going that way. There's uh, new studios um, projected for Ashford. There's new, um, uh, 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 a big massive theme park being developed in Ebbsfield. So London as ever, from Croydon to Hounslow, to Lambeth, to Brixton, to Tower Hamlets, to those big kind of uh, landmark places like King's Cross and um, uh, uh, Stratford, London is continually growing. And I think that this will be speeded up by, possibly be speeded up by any 
further disruption that we have, whether that be through COVID or through Brexit. Um, hard times produce uh, really innovative uh, results. London is really born of, um, of, of, of many different uh, catastrophes and changes. And um, I don't think that uh, Soho will die out anytime soon. I don't think the centre will change. But what we will find is that this ripple effect continually grows. And as I said before, you know, this is not unique. This is, this, in, in, in some way, obviously, the City of London and London itself and Greater London and the uh, London and Bronze are uh, all unique in their own way. But when we look at the global stage, and if we go back to what I was saying at the beginning about um, uh, you know, uh, Hilversum, uh, about uh, uh, Subtopia in Stockholm, uh, about Shenzhen, Maker City and Colorado, these are all plans that, uh, that that are under in hand to to create really interesting creative spaces. So to end, I'd, I'd just like to go on the ethical principle. I think that mixed use is is really important for us to think about how we retain local communities instead of just bulldozing and regenerating without thinking about what's already there, making use of what's already there, but working with local communities. Uh, to have more diversity, some of the areas that are uh, under uh, um, uh, uh, investigation for kind of new growth, um, some of the uh, poorest boroughs in in, uh, in in the UK or poorest councils in in the UK. So it's understandable why they would influx of, of uh, people there. But we have to kind of make uh, make things fairer for everybody. Um, and as for working from home, well, I think that's taught us that we do need communal spaces. We do need places where we can go and hopefully they will be open and, and accessible in the not too distant future. I know that museums are opening up or have been opening up uh, over the last week here in London. I know that there's a lot going on uh, all over London uh, at the moment in terms of uh, people doing uh, fantastic work. I've just done a, uh, a course with um, some interns that were out going, second year students from London College of Communication, who are all uh, working as interns during uh, lockdown here in London. Um, and they were working from home, but they're looking forward to be able to get back into studios uh, in September, October. I myself am looking back to going into college uh, uh, from October onwards. and. Uh, I think that as London, you know, is is has that resilient uh, quality of, of a diaspora of, of amazing people. I can't wait to get back into it. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I've gone three minutes over. Um, if there's any questions, then let me know. Hi, Tracy. Have we got? That was really interesting, and um, we don't have any questions just yet. So okay. we, um, pop those in the chat if anyone has any questions for Robert. And if you'd like to explore these topics more, then do join our Creative Industries London module. Um, as I say, it runs um, online in the autumn and then in person, we hope, from the spring. So, um, okay. That's good. That's Thank you. Nadia said thank you. Oh, okay, that's, that's thank you, Nadia. Um, How would we join the module? Ah, that's one from Caitlin. Okay, yes, I can. I can send you details. So um, it's an online application form, um, and I'll send everyone the details afterwards. Um, but it um, it runs. Um, there's a weekly session with Robert um, up until December, and it starts on the 21st of September. Um, but I will send everyone information. Anyway. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask myself a question. How would this be different from the from the course that would be running? I think it, and the, uh, the main course, there'll be a lot more interviews with design studios and creative practices. Um, so that would that would be a really interesting feature of uh, how this would develop further as a course. It's um, you know there'll be a lot more interviews and, um, and visits, virtual visits, uh, and physical visits if that's possible to 
uh, studios and areas of London that are that are creative and that um, require further investigation. So many different creative parts of London. It's phenomenal. Oh, yeah, I'm not seeing any more questions. Oh, oh tips for starting up in London. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. So, any tips for starting up? Um, yes. Yeah, I guess it depends on what you want. Who said that? It was, let me see. Who was the. I'll put it on the chat. Uh, oh, I'll go back to my other chat here. So, do you have any tips? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. Um, Start. So if you, I don't know whether you're you, you're finishing a degree at the moment or you're graduating, but there's several, it depends on your situation. I mean, I think that finding somewhere where there's other creative people. So moving to an area where you, okay, that's interesting. Um, so do you have any tips for starting up? Okay, so I'll ask, ask that question first. Yes, graduating in 2021. So move to somewhere where there's things going on. It depends on your budget. But again, it also depends on what you're into. If you're into IT and um, uh, 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 kind of software stuff, you know, roundabout Stratford and being part of Here East would be really good. Interior and spatial design. Okay. Um, that traditionally used to be the area around Chelsea and Fulham in West London was a big interior and spatial design. But now Southwark has got a lot of uh, designs, uh, kind of architectural design practices. Um, and it's being able to kind of be around people that are doing something similar to you, particularly when you're just starting out, you need to have people that are going through the same thing as you, because you need to help each other as you, as you go, lift each other up, because there will be times when there's nothing going on, there will be times when, um, when you find it tough. Um, so if I, I would, I would get a travel card and Go go around London with some friends and just go to different places um, because there are kind of often there might be um, kind of incubator hubs for starting up as a graduate from from certain councils town councils that you wouldn't expect you know just being in Westminster or or Hackney they're oversubscribed so it's about finding somewhere where there, there might be something where you can get free space for a while and, and the, have a look at the creative enterprise hub sorry creative what's it called creative enterprise zones um because there's funding for starting up things with them so i hope that helps but but yeah be around be around people if you move out to somewhere at the end of the tube line and you're just on your own then that's really difficult um so okay so I'm just not, thanks for that. Hopefully that's answered your question, Medina. Um, right, so as a, and um, 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 Mas, Mahasan has asked, is there a yellow pages of creative press? Uh, <laughs> there, there isn't a yellow pages of creative professionals to intern with because it really depends on who you want to intern with, not who will take you on. The advice I would always give to someone who wants to do an internship is do your research. Like find agencies or places that you really like their work and importantly that you feel like your work fits in with what they do because they need you to it's a two-way traction yeah so you have to to make sure that you are uh, uh, able to offer them something so you've got to be realistic about what's your portfolio say about you what what can you do and then find an agency's work you really love and then approach each one individually if you just do a dear sir or madam i want to work for you because i want to be an intern it won't get you anywhere you have to really have a, a good conversation with or, or try and open up a good conversation with them um that's my advice just to have a blanket yellow pages it doesn't really work like that because because um because it's not personal enough to you it, it's um there are people that, depending on what course you're on, if you talk to your course leader, they might have a recommendation. Um, but, the, but the main thing is you've got to kind of do a bit of kind of um, a hard, hard push yourself and, and, and really look at who you who you admire and want to work with. Yeah. Um, right. Unfortunately, I joined a bit late. He might have covered this earlier. 
so excuse repetition i'm involved in the development of the greatest strategy for a country and i'm wondering if the concepts are included in the module would be relevant to specific tracks yes that's an interesting question um so yeah i think that as i was mentioning i'm talking to noof now noof um i mean i think there's there's parallels with other countries in terms of how strategy and, 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 and concept develop. I think it would be a good course for you, you know, if you wanted to see how London works creatively. We've only had half an hour today, so it's been quite brief, but I'm interested in strategy of, of how creative industries fit together. Um, yeah, so it may, I would say, pop, try it and see. I think, I, think it, I think it would be relevant to strategy development, yes. Yes, I think it would. No, yeah. Hopefully, you're still there. So, answering Ruth's question, yes. Um, do you have any ideas from Caitlin about how I find companies or agencies to work with in London while in the US? Um, yeah, the internet, Caitlin. Um, I, I think again, rather like I was saying to to uh, uh, was it Medina? Um, it, it's it's yeah. It's sometimes hard. It depends on what you want to do. But um, one way of dealing with this, if you're going in kind of like without knowing London, is to go onto Google Maps. It's quite a rough shod way, and then type in if you're a graphic design graphic design agency, and then hit and miss like that. The DNID annual is pretty good. So DNID Design and Art Directors Club, but it's spelled D and ampersands A D. They have an awards every year of the best creative work. So if you're in advertising or marketing or graphic design, that's a good place to start. Um, there are websites. Again, if you're a graphic designer or a creative, visual creative person, there's a website called It's Nice That, um, which showcases really good design work. Um, DNAD.org, yeah, that's it. And It's Nice That uh, are a good uh, source uh, in London based um, kind of uh, online uh, uh, showcase for, for great design and creative work. Um, other than that, yeah, I think that's probably your best bet. DNAD, and it's nice that if it's visual work, yeah. It, 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 if Kathleen wants to, Caitlin rather wants to um, say what field of creativity you're in, I might be able to give you more info. But. There we go. So yes, it's it's um, finding out where things are. It's that would be on the course. What we would be doing, um, if you wanted to join us, would be to we, I would be going through each industry, well, yeah, the, the major industries, and we would be looking at really good design studios during that time. Um, so painting major okay right painting focusing marketing okay so that's good um so yes look at those two uh okay then and that that should help you quite a lot um the other thing would be campaign which is a, a, a an advertising um uh, journal uh, which is online um but yeah i'm certainly on the course that we're running the we would be looking at these kind of major interviews and working out who the uh, top people are. So to go with the yellow pages, um, if you were thinking about interning in London, which would be a, a really good thing to do, um, then the course will provide you with some kind of uh, knowledge from that. But you have to, you always have to kind of bring your own voice to that because people don't just take on an intern without some reciprocal quality of where they see your work going. So it's important to really target the work to, to what, you, what you want to do um, and, and really love who you're working for because it's, uh, it's, it's hard work going in from being at college to being an intern. So hopefully that's helped. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Um, okay. And well, I, share the slides with everyone. And yeah. Well, hopefully, I'll see everyone on the course because I think that you know those questions are kind of uh, uh, very valid for how how we approach what we're talking to you about with the creative industries. We can't, we won't, uh, we won't give you an internship, but we'll present you with the 
the, the information that you need to make an informed decision. Yeah, so thank you everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.